Hello and welcome to another Intratech video about Scratch presented by myself Dieter Lander. Before we start I must apologize for any background noises. We are currently enduring a rather significant thunderstorm at the time of recording this video. In today's video we are going to review a game written by one of our students James who attended our course that we held at Trinity House Preparatory School in Rampark Ridge in 2015. James was one of the course project prize winners. He was a runner-up. He won uh, for his efforts a My Robot kit which we will link to in the video notes below. And before we start reviewing his code let's actually have a look at what it is. It's an adaptation of the familiar uh, Nokia game called Snake and the aim of the game is to move a snake head around to try and catch yellow balls to increase your score. If you go off screen the game ends and if you move the snake so that its head crosses its body or tail the game ends as well. Um, so let's give it a demo and see how it works. Alright we have a score counter up at the top here. We start off with the game over screen which we'll see why when we have a look at the code but if we click the green flag there we start off there's a small delay moving our arrow keys we can move the snake around and try and catch the yellow circle as soon as you catch it a second one appears and then a third one and so on and there you can see I turn to the right too quickly and I hit the border of the game and that caused the game to be over. I was able to score a score of three. Right, so let's go have a look at how this game was made. Okay, first off we've got the stage. Okay, which if we look at the backgrounds, there are two. There's the game over background, which we start off with, and then there's the game play or game in play background. Okay, the game in play background has got a name of Rays and the game over background is just called backdrop one. If we go and look at the scripts for the stage, it's a very th simple three line script. When green flag clicked, we switch background to rays, so the background that we use during gameplay, and then we wait two seconds. So the initial pause when the game starts before the snake head starts to move comes from this wait two seconds line over here. If we go and have a look at our sprites, we've got two sprites. There's the snake head and then there is the ball. So if we look at the snake head, go to costumes, there is only one costume, which is the snake head with its red tail sticking out. Now that red, sorry, tongue, not tail, is rather important because that is used in the code to detect when the snake is touching a ball. If we go and have a look at where the head has its center, we can see there is the center. So it's not over here which would be the normal center it is a bit further back. And remember the center is what your sprite rotates around when you move it. So if we go and have a look at our ball sprite we see there are a whole bunch of different colors but in this particular implementation of the game James only chose to use the first one being the yellow one. Let's go back to our snake head Let's go have a look at the scripts. We have three code blocks. The first one starts with when green flag clicked. So when the player clicks on the green flag, this will start to run. And the second two blocks are actually copies of the same broadcast message when I receive game over. So in theory, these could both be put together under one when I receive game over. Uh, but James must probably split them up to make it easier to understand. So starting at the left, when I click the green flag, I show my sprite, so I show the snake head. I set the score to zero, so we have a variable over here called score. And we go to x0, y0. That pu positions the snake head in the middle of the stage, based on the coordinates which are the center of the snake head. Then we pause again for one second. So now we've got a two second pause from the stage plus an additional one second pause from the 
snakehead sprite and then we go into a forever loop okay and it looks quite long and it seems to contain quite a lot but there are a couple of distinctive blocks here which make it easier to understand so the first thing we do is we move five steps so every time the forever loop comes back to the top we move five steps then we put the pen down set the pen color to blue and set the pen size to four now technically these three green blocks could have been moved out of the forever loop because you don't ne really need to set them every time the loop runs then we have four blocks which are nearly identical they're these four if then blocks and as you can see what we are doing is we are checking the arrow keys on the keyboard to see if they've been pressed if they have been pressed then we change the direction of the snake so if the up arrow is pressed then we point in direction zero remember our circles has zero at the top 90 on the right 180 at the bottom and 270 on the left which can also be written as minus 90 so arrow up is 0, arrow down is 180, arrow right is 90 and arrow left is minus 90 so these four blocks here are pretty much the same and they are what allows the user to control where the snake is going because remember they have no control over how fast it is going because it always moves five step on every loop in the forever loop but they can change the direction then we get to some logic two logic blocks the first one is if the sprite which is the snake sprite is touching the edge so the edge of the stage then we put the pen up so we stop drawing and we broadcast game over and then we stop all scripts okay we'll get back to what happens when this broadcast game over uh, is called let's carry on with the script so this is one way that the game ends okay the second way is if the color red is touching the color blue now the only red color in this game is the tip of the snake tongue and the only blue color is the blue color that we set up here which is what is the snake's body so what this is saying is if the snake's tongue touches the snake's body then we also end the game so once again we broadcast game over and we call a stop all to stop all the scripts so let's go and look at our ball before we come and see what happens on game over our ball also has a when green flag clicked it sets the score to zero as well which is a bit redundant but won't break anything and then we show the ball and we also enter into a forever loop and the first thing we do is we do a if then check we check if the ball is touching the snake head which means that the player has managed to get the snake head onto the ball if the ball is touching the snake head then we play the sound pop we change the score by one so that is we increment the score by one so if the score is one and we increment it will become two if the score is five and we increment it it will become six and then we move the ball so we pick a random location for x and y minus 240 to plus 240 is the x range on the stage and minus 180 to plus 180 is the y range on the stage so this means the ball can appear anywhere on the stage and because you've chosen the absolute maximum range minus 240 plus 240 minus 180 plus 180 it means that the ball could actually have some of it appear off the stage so you might only see a half or a quarter of the ball depending where it lands up being put and then we go back into our loop again and every time we check if the snake's head has been uh, moved over the ball and if it does we increment our score and we move the ball now here you can see in the ball code we also have a when I receive game over broadcast and all that does is it hides the ball so when the game stops the ball gets hidden we go back to our snake here when I receive game over we hide the snake head and we switch the backdrop to backdrop 1 and if we go look at our stage backdrops backdrop 1 is the one that says game over the second thing we do on our scripts for our snake head is also when we receive game over we go to x0 y0 
So we reset the position of the snakehead, we clear what has been drawn and we pick the pen up. Okay, so that is pretty much all there is to the game. It's not that complicated, it could be improved on but it is a very good first effort and in closing let's give it another try. So we hit our green flag, that score should drop to zero when the game starts. And there you go, there's our three second delay. Okay, as you can see the ball was a bit off stage. And that's where we have our game over. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. As always, please subscribe. It will help us and let us know that these videos are worth making. See you next time.